Good morning and welcome back to the Vine Morning Show on this Wednesday morning. I'm Mark. It's great to have you along this morning. And we welcome those watching on our YouTube channel and also on cable TV channel 15 as we have a special guest in the studio with us today. It is Pastor Steve Upchurch from the Rock Church in Centralia. Pastor Steve's first time here and uh, welcome Pastor Steve. It's great to have you. Good morning. And uh, Pastor Steve, you hear uh, his sermon every Monday evening at 8 o'clock here on The Vine, and uh, he pastors the Rock Church in Centralia. Tell us a little bit about, before we get into your book, The Adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis, tell us a little bit about, uh, give us a little bit of testimony of how you got in the ministry and a little bit about the church, Steve. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> actually, when I was, uh, I, I was 15 years old, born, born and raised in a Christian home, mm-hmm. uh, Christian mom and dad. I got uh, five siblings, uh, and all of the uh, four of the five of those are involved in ministry as well. And uh, uh, but yeah, as, as a 15-year-old young man, I felt the call from God to uh, some type of ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I ran from that. Didn't run from God, but I ran from that calling. Sure. And uh, and went to Bible school, majored in music, uh, stayed involved in, in church throughout my life, and mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, as, as a music director or, or a minister of music, and um, my, my professional career, I ended up in plant management. Spent, okay. Spent 28 years in plant management. At the age of 55, uh, we were attending Orchardville Church, and Pastor Mark uh, talked about the vision of, of opening a branch in Centralia. Sure. And approached me about becoming the, the church administrator there. And a few months later, then that led into the possibility of becoming the pastor. And that's that's how God kind of hooked mm, me. Sure. You know, and, and brought me back to that original calling that, that he had placed in my life. So at the age of 55, I became a pastor. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, we have just seen um, uh, the birth of that church in Centralia. Uh, and then, then with the passing of Pastor Mark, sure, and, and and his vision as far as you know the the three churches becoming their their separate I- identities, uh, uh, we became the Rock Church. Uh, of course, we still have that foundation, and we still have uh, you know uh, everything that Pastor Mark poured into that church is still there. Right. Uh, but yeah, the church has done very very well. Uh, uh, as we just shared just a couple minutes off sure. air, we've we've uh, we've seen. Between 120 and 130 people get saved this year. Amazing. So God is just absolutely pouring out his spirit for those that are hungry for him. Uh, I do believe we are seeing the latter rain. I think you're right, Uh, Steve. I really do. And I I was going to ask you that. Do you believe that's why people are coming to to cry? There's no doubt about it. Yeah, without doubt. Uh, All you have to do is... Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're not comfortable reading your Bible, read your newspaper. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> See what's going on around us in the news. You have to realize yeah. Yeah. we're we're living in unprecedented times. That's true. You know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I th- I think people are starting to understand and realize. You know what? Uh, this world is a very unstable place. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, as we look for something that's stable, that's firm, that doesn't change. Mm-hmm. There's only one place you're going right. to find that, and that's in the Word of God, and that's, that's right. through Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, you know, and everything's being fulfilled. Prophecy is being fulfilled on a daily basis. You oh, see it right yes. and left. And you know, and and Laura, we talk about, and usually the guests that are here that are, that talk about it. It's exciting times to be a Christian, oh, Steve. Yes. There's no reason to to fear right. what's going to happen because we know where our future lies. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, the interview that you had with Kevin McLean, yes. you know, just a, a couple of months ago, uh, that was just a, a very eye-opening, I think, for a lot of people mm-hmm. to realize, you know, we're farther along in this thing than we realize. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and I mentioned Kevin, I, I got a text from him the other day, and we kind of correspond back and forth about things going on and, right. and with Russia and what's going on right now. And he says, you know, everybody's focusing that uh, the tech, I can't remember what the text said, but, you know, directly north of Russia is Turkey. Yeah. And they're the sleeper, yeah. so to speak, oh, you know, yes. oh, of what's yes. going on there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know that's awesome that uh, people are coming to Christ, yes. and in droves, and that's what it's all about: is yes. to witness, to show them the love of God, to mm-hmm. tell them what's going on, 
uh, concerning the word and, and what mm-hmm. the Bible is talking about. It's yes. very important we pay attention to it. Yes, it is. It yes, really it is. is. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you here. And, you know, you're at 55 and called to the ministry. It just goes to show you it doesn't matter how old you are, Steve. God can that bring you into so the place true. he wants you to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And one of those things that I believe, I think once God places a calling on your life, I think it's there. Yes. Uh, I, I just I believe that. You know, we can run from it and we can try to hide from it. But, uh, you know, God, uh, God is kind of like that hound dog, you know. Sure. He, he just don't give up once he, once he gets that scent. Uh, he, and keeps comes after at, you. And he comes after you yeah. and just keeps coming after you and coming after you and opening doors and putting you in places yes. and positions where, you know what, you see uh, where you need to be. Amen. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. I see that with my own life. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think once you experience that, you know what you're, you, where you're destined to be. Yes. I really do. Yeah. Well, you're here today, and we're glad to have you here, and you're here today also to talk about uh, the adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis. It's a children's book yes. that you have written. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Where do you begin? <laughs> well, actually, the, 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 the concept, the theme uh, behind the book is about this little 10-year-old boy named Matthew that is reading his Bible, and he's struggling to understand his Bible and, and kind of where this came came about uh, it's been about a year ago I had a dream mm-hmm. and in this dream I saw this this little boy and I could relate to that because I remember you know when I was a 10 year old boy uh, trying to read my Bible and we had all we had in our house was the King James version mm-hmm. you know sure. and I really struggled trying to understand what you know what what the Bible meant and uh, but yes, in my dream, I see this this little ten year old boy, and and he's struggling trying to understand the Bible, and he reads this Bible, and he just he's you know he he just has a hard time understanding it. So he goes uh, goes to bed that night, and in his dream, this angel shows up. Only he's not your typical angel. Uh, this angel is, is his name is Andy, and Andy is uh, short and stocky, and, and <laughs> instead of Instead of uh, you know the the long flowing white robe, sure. you know he he has on a red uh, basketball jersey and shorts and tennis shoes, and instead of his wings being real long and flowing, you know like we've seen mm-hmm. the pictures, uh, his his wings are little short stubby wings, kind of like an ostrich, and sure, uh, just it's not sure what what you would think an angel would look like, sure. But Andy can re, uh, relate to Matthew, and Matthew can relate to Andy. Yeah. And so what Andy does is he starts taking Matthew back in time in his dream, and they visit Bible stories firsthand. And then it's uh, the, the way it's written is from the perspective of that 10-year-old boy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, how, how long has the book been out? It actually came out in uh, the latter part of September, I think the last week of September. So it's only been out for a couple of months now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was about a year in the writing and editing and getting it published, and uh, uh, that was that was quite an experience. You know, I was going to ask you when it comes when you when God gives you this vision to write a book, which you have done. How hard is it to go from that point? Okay, God, I'm going to do this. You show me the way. You know, did you have to go get advice from someone that has written a book before? Did you do any research on it? You or know, you just I, you took know, the I word just, that God gave you? I just jumped right into it. Yeah, I just jumped right into it. But I, but here's one of the things that I do remember uh, when, when Pastor Mark Shell wrote his book. One of the things he talked about how uh, he had to be careful that he didn't become consumed mm-hmm. by writing the book. And, and I and I took that to heart, uh, and really kind of set uh, aside, you know, that that instead of spending four or five, six hours a day trying, you know, writing the book, I tried to limit myself to mm-hmm. how much that that I would write, you know, sit down and write at at a, at a time period, and that worked very well. That way, you don't get burnt out with it, you know, it, it still stays fresh. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I just sat down and started putting my thoughts together. And, you know, the, of course, the right place to start is Genesis 1. Sure. With creation. Sure. And, uh, and it took me a little bit to kind of get back into that mindset of remembering what it was like to be a 10- or 11-year-old boy. You know, yeah. And to, and to write from that perspective. You know, being a minister, you know, your focus is a lot on what's going on in the church and then preparing your sermon for Sunday 
But then on top of that, writing a book, did you d- dedicate one day to just sitting down and writing the book, or was it just spread out over each day that it, you got the vision? It was spread out over, it, it, it was probably six, eight months in writing the book. There's 11 chapters in the book, mm-hmm. and, and, and the book covers from creation day all the way through Genesis to the to the life of Joseph mm-hmm. through the life of life of Joseph. Wow! So that's the time span that this book covers. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just trying to look at things in the Bible. I mean, uh, uh, the stories in the Bible from that perspective of a ten year old boy, and and this li- and this angel that's his sidekick, that's really quirky. Mm-hmm. You know, that has all the weird mm-hmm. questions and the, and the weird outlook of. of you know the the animals on on the ark, and and you know the mess that was there that they had to clean up, and you know just all those things that you know ten year old boys get into. Well, you know you were young when and you said you started reading the Bible at a young age, mm-hmm. and that's where the benefit for you came in to write this book because you were able to reflect back on your life what you learned over the course of time and apply it to the book. Sure, sure, yeah. And that's yeah. that's now when you edit the book, do you go back and have to go back and how much editing is required in a book like that this? took a whole lot I, I mean I thought <laughs> yeah. you know you you sit down and you write something and mm-hmm. um, you think you know I uh, this is pretty accurate I uh, you know of course you have spell check and all those things sure. to help you along the way but it'd been a long time since I, I had taken English and uh, you know punctuation and all those things oh yeah school. yeah and so I, I did uh, I did seek the advice of my sister-in-law uh, Jill and uh, and she helped me edit the book as sure. far as punctuation. And she had a few ideas along the way. And so that really helped as well. She's a school teacher. So, so that helps. And yeah. she actually teaches, you know, fourth graders. So, I mean, she was an excellent resource for me to go you know, to. And, you know, there, you, there again, God laid that on your heart to write this book. And you had the help mm-hmm. from her to be mm-hmm. able to help you along the mm-hmm. way. Well, wow, wow this, is, this is really awesome. We're talking with Pastor Steve Upchurch this morning from the Rock Church in Centralia who has written a book called The Answer, uh, the Adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis. And we're going to come back and talk more, Steve. We've got some questions. You've got a book signing coming up. Uh, talk about the purpose of the book. And, you know, when you put a book together, where you, your first thing you got to do is, okay, who's going to publish the book? Right. You can come back and give us details on that when we come back. We'll do that in the 9 o'clock hour. Sound good? Yes. All right. Sounds good with Pastor Steve Upchurch this morning here on the Vine Morning Show. And we welcome you back to the Vine Morning Show on this Wednesday morning as Pastor Steve Upchurch from the Rock Church in Centralia is with us this morning as we're talking about the adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis. And uh, this is a book that Pastor Steve has written. And uh, we were talking off the air, Steve, about about the age group. You know, people are wondering, well, what age group is this book written for? Well, the concept that I had was, you know, with it being a 10-year-old boy, that it mm-hmm. would probably cover the ages of, you know, 7 or 8 to 12, 13, maybe 14 uh, years old. Uh, so that w- that was the range that, that I had in mind. But what mm-hmm. I'm finding is that a lot of moms and dads are reading the book <laughs> and enjoying the book. A sure. lot of grandmas and grandpas are reading the book and enjoying the book. Uh, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago after church, one of the ladies uh uh, in our church approached me and she said hey I've, I've been reading your book she said and uh, I got to page five she said and, and I put the book down picked up the phone called my daughter who's a freshman in college and said I need to send you this book because it answers all of those questions you've been asking me about creation mm. so she mailed the book to her her daughter of course she told her daughter now you can read the book but be sure and send it back send to me i want to finish it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it speaks to many a so to so many ages and volume out there to many people yeah. doesn't yeah. it yes it does yeah. yeah now you were telling me off the air too a story about you were at uh you went to aiken you were invited down there yes. and to read the book right? yes my, my granddaughter mm-hmm. uh, jaylen uh, attends school in aiken grade school which is right outside of benton and uh, and her teacher found out about the book, and then uh, one of the I think it was the third grade teacher as well, and so they invited me to come down and, and do a book reading and answer questions. And so yeah, a couple of weeks ago Friday, went down and visited the grade school and, and and got to spend some time with the kids and answer a lot of questions and uh, and even answered questions from several of the teachers. And mm-hmm. so yeah, that was that was a great experience. Sure, sure, and I'm sure some of those questions that were uh, brought up were thinking, oh my goodness how can i answer that you yes know? 
Yeah, but but that's but kids are they they want to know. They're asking questions, so that's a good sign. Sure. And everything. Now, when when you put a book together like this from scratch, and this was the first time you've ever written the book, right? Right. right. And of course, you had someone to help you out, right? And uh, but now comes the dealing with the publisher. Okay, mm-hmm. who do I turn to to publish this? Do you have to put feelers out there? Do you did you call anyone or did someone reach out to you? You know, I had, uh, and it, to me, it was divine intervention because as soon as I started writing the book, it seemed like every time I I flipped on my computer, I'm seeing this this advertisement for West Bow Press. And after about the third or fourth time of seeing that name, I was like, mm, maybe, you know, maybe this is the direction I need to go. So I, I clicked on to it, and it's a Christian uh, publisher. Mm-hmm. And so I contacted them, and yes, uh, as soon as I told them the concept of the book, um, yeah, my contact there said, you know what, I don't think we have a book any children's book that kind of follows this theme now mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, children's bibles and there's there's a children's book that kind of just they tell the basic stories mm-hmm. of the bible but as far as having a a twist or a hook you know that that draws you know a 10 year old in mm-hmm. that goes beyond just the story of the bible but the life of a 10 year old child mm-hmm. and the things that they face and the questions they have and things that are going on in their life because in the book it does it's not strictly just about the book i mean it's not strictly just about the bible it also brings in matthew's mom and dad and his grandpa and his family uh, his pastor his um, his sunday school teacher in <laughs> fact in in the in the book the pastor is pastor mark and i did mm-hmm. that after uh, my mentor sure. and, and my pastor pastor mark shell sure and, uh, and in fact i've i've dedicated part of that book uh, to him in the to back him. there, one of the acknowledgments is wow. to Pastor Mark Shell. And you just had to come up names with parents and stuff yes. like that. How, how, yep. what, how did you do that? Did you just randomly yep. think of somebody? Or? No, I, I, I tried to, I tried to connect with someone that I actually know. The, sure. the, uh, the, the kids director, the Sunday school teacher that's in the book. Uh, her name is Miss Murphy. Well, our kids director at the Rock is Stephanie Murphy. Okay. So I mean, I kind of use some, uh, <laughs> and then there's some personality traits of of Andy, uh, the quirkiness of him, and and, and people in Centralia will know uh, Jesse Gray or Jean Gray. That's my best friend since mm-hmm. third grade. We grew up together in Heron. Went to Bible school together. Uh, I was his best man. He was my best man. And he's that quirky person. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and to call uh, Jean Grey quirky, uh, mm-hmm. that, that's putting it mild. Okay, that, that's the... Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, ha- now, have these people read the book? Yes. Have you, have you, have you, yes. And what's their opinion? What are they thinking? They, they you thinking know, everyone about? that has read it so far has just given rave reviews. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah. Wow. And see, that's the thing, you know, once they, the people that you use in the book and they, they read it, then they can go talk about it. And it's like, just, it'll spread like wildfire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, the purpose of the book, Steve, you know, what's, what's the perp, what, what do you want the purpose of the book to be? Well, very clearly, uh, I want kids to understand that the Bible is the number one bestseller for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only is it God ordained, but I mean it, it's life changing. You know, I mean, uh, and it's so easy for for children uh, to to start reading the Bible, and as soon as they they don't understand it, they get turned off. Sure. And th- and they'll take that Bible and set it aside, and it just stays there and collects dust. And and, and sometimes that that goes throughout their whole lifetime. You know that the Bible sits on uh, on the coffee table, or it sits in a, in a bookshelf, and it's never picked up and read because it go, it all goes back to that experience as a child of you know what I tried to read it, but I didn't understand that these and thous and you know thou shalt not and thou mm-hmm. shalt and 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 I ju- it it just I I couldn't follow that. Mm-hmm. So for me, the purpose was to develop a hunger in kids that when they read this to understand. Oh man, the Bible can be exciting. Mm-hmm. Just open your mind, to, uh, put yourself in that position. You know, put yourself in Joseph's position mm-hmm. when he's in prison. Mm-hmm. Put yourself in Joseph's position when he's falsely accused. Mm-hmm. Um, put yourself in his position when he's betrayed by his brothers and his family. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and, and then I tried to include sights and sounds and feel and touch. 
from the perspective of a 10 year old boy mm-hmm. because you know kids see things differently sure so when it's written from that that perspective yeah it, it, it seems like it really uh, not only does it draw kids in but the adults that are reading it it kind of draws them in too i think to for a lot of them it kind of takes them back to sure that yeah. you know I, well, yeah i can relate to that i remember yeah. when i was first started reading the bible and really struggled you know with understanding certain parts of the bible and sure so, so yeah that's the purpose is to develop a hunger and a thirst for the word of god you know that's so awesome because uh, you know the book is geared toward children but adults can just get as much out of it as kids can oh very much so yeah yeah, yeah very much so now you have some book signings coming up right yes i do all right uh, tell us about the book signings uh, this coming saturday i will be at daystar uh, bookstore in mount vernon from one o'clock till uh, uh from 11 a.m till one o'clock mm-hmm. and so uh yeah, come on out. I'd uh, be happy to sign some books, answer questions about not only about the book, but if, if you know there's anyone out there that's thinking about writing a book and we've got questions about what I went through, I'd be happy to answer answer any of those questions mm-hmm. and help anyone as much as I can. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, if, like, say, for instance, this would be good for, like, um, people in nursing homes, Steve. Oh, yes. Yeah, you yeah. know, if yeah. a nursing home has a library and you want to add mm-hmm. this to your library. Yeah, I've already be, had several churches get a hold of me. Put say the, put the, yeah, putting the book in their library. and uh, Yeah, so it's... Uh, doing well it's doing yeah, really doing well, well. Mm-hmm. now and uh, if anyone wants to to get a hold of you and say hey i want i want to buy a book i want to i want to i want to experience this book right now how can they get a hold of you the easiest place probably would go on facebook mm-hmm. i have a facebook page uh, uh steve e up church okay. uh, just contact me on on facebook there's uh, play, there's information on my facebook page about the book about how to, to how to get the book uh it's available on and uh, if you're wanting to buy it over on a uh, website um, barnesandnoble.com uh, amazon.com uh, actually my my publisher they have distributed the information for the book to over 300 books uh, websites nationwide wow so uh yeah it's 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 available what's the cost of the book steve if people want to know an ebook is mm-hmm. uh, this is the the retail price from the publisher uh e-book, uh, an ebook is a dollar 95 mm-hmm. uh, the soft cover is 11.95 mm-hmm. and a hard cover is 28.95 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's your choices right there yeah so this, uh, when is the book signing coming up again? This coming Saturday in Mount Vernon mm-hmm. at Daystar Bookstore. Uh, I'll be there from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. And yeah, come on out. And if anyone wants you to, uh, hey, I want Steve at my store, in my shop, Absolutely. in my business, they can get a hold of you through Facebook. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, contact me here at the Vine and get a hold of me. I'll get I'll get word to Steve yes. and hook well, you up you. with him and all that too. So. Yes. And then the following Saturday, mm-hmm. uh, December the 12th, I will be at the Centralia Library performing a reading and answering questions. And I'll be there f- um, from 1 to 3. On, on Saturday, December the 12th at the Centralia Library in Centralia. In Centralia. Yes. All right. Anything coming up after the first of the year at this point? Yes. Uh, Go I, right ahead. Well, yeah. it, in, in the, around the middle of January, I will be at Carlisle Library, again, performing a reading and a book signing and answering questions. So, so you just go to Steve, you're Steve E. Upchurch on Facebook. Yes. And you can get all the details about the signings. You'll yes. post them on there, too, Yes. Uh, depending on where you live in southern Illinois. And uh, if you want to get a hold of Steve and make arrangements for, for him to come and speak, answer yes, any questions. I, I would be happy yeah. to do so. Yeah. The Adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis, a book written by Steve Upchurch. Steve, I, I can't wait to read it, and I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, and I'm yeah. excited for kids to get a hold of this book yeah. because it could actually change their life and give them an understanding of the Bible, which it's supposed to. Yes, and, and the idea is that this is the first of a series. This mm-hmm. covers the book of Genesis. Now, I've had people ask me, does that mean you're going to write 66 books? No. <laughs> no I was going to ask you, are you going to write 60? I was going to ask you that question. <laughs> you just answered it. <laughs> you know, as, you, as you get into Leviticus and Numbers and, you know, uh, some of those, we'll, we'll pick the highlights from those uh, sure. those books and, and cover that. But, uh, yeah, I've already started on the second book, and it's the book of Exodus. I've introduced uh, a new character in the second book. And, uh, and and I'll be honest with you, I'm getting a, a really big kick out of this this second book. Uh, in fact, numerous times I just stop and and I, I'll be laughing, and my wife is sitting you know next to me, and she says, "Okay, okay, tell me what's <laughs> wh- where are you? What what's going on?" Sure. And the the new character that I've added is Pete the parrot, 
And uh, Matthew has an aunt, Judy, which I've named after my sister. Uh, in fact, she just got back from a missions trip. Uh, and uh, and, sh- and in, in the book, Judy is getting ready, Aunt Judy's getting ready to go on a missions trip. Okay. She's going overseas and going to stay. So she has to get rid of her pets. Well, she has a parrot, an African gray parrot named Pete. And she's named him Pete because Peter in the Bible was always running his mouth. <laughs> And getting himself in trouble because of his big mouth. So that's Pete the parrot. He's constantly running his mouth and getting himself in trouble. And so, yeah, it's, that's a new character. In wow. The, the, and that the, book the you're already book. working on. I'm already working on that. Now, how, how far do you have, and, and you know how far you're going to go with this. How far are you planning ahead? Are you, are you when it just something comes to mind? Yeah. You I write mean, it down? I just, I just, yeah, just keep on going. Uh Wow! Yeah. Wow! Well, God's given you a vision, my friend. That oh. that I think this is just going to be awesome, and it's going to be in a series eventually, in a yes. series of books. Yes. And you can get a hold of Steve on Facebook, Stevie Up Church. Get a hold of us here at the Vine. We'll be glad to get in, get you in contact with Steve. And again, run, one more time, run down those book signings if you don't mind. Okay. Yes. This uh, this coming Saturday, I'll be at Daystar in Mount Vernon from eleven to one. Uh, then the following Saturday, I will be at the Centralia Library from uh, 1 to 3. And then the middle of December or, or January, I will be at the Carlisle Library. Uh, and and I'll, I'll get those dates out um, uh, as, as that gets closer. That it gets yeah. closer. And just uh, friend Steve on Facebook at Steve E. Church, and he will give you all the details. Yep. Steve, The Adventures of Matthew and Andy Genesis. Thanks for coming in today and you sharing this book. You are very welcome. Thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity. Now, let me also give you a, sure. give a plug on, uh, on 105.5, The yes. Vine in Centralia. Thank you so much for for bringing that, that, uh, the station here to Centralia. Well, praise God. We appreciate that. And, and uh, you know, we, we appreciate our listeners in the Centralia area. Yes. We know we have many, yeah. and we hope to meet many of our listeners up there someday we get great feedback from from the centralia community and we appreciate that we really do so we appreciate all of our listeners in centralia 105.5 okay all right steve thanks a lot for coming in it's been fun i appreciate it Mm -hmm. pastor steve